creator of the universe. Father, we come before you in the throne of grace and mercy tonight. Father, I cry out to you that thou will show us your mercy. For we are not gathered unto man, we are gathered unto you. Thou who created everything. I will ask that you show us your mercy by forgiving us our sins. In every way we've sinned against you. In thought, word, and deed. Whether we remember the sins or not, whether we're even aware of them or not. Father, we ask for mercy and forgiveness. Bury all the sins of our lives in your sea of forgetfulness. Don't let them come before your holy face again, ever again. Don't let them hurt us as well. But let the blood of Jesus Christ be released, even now. that all sins of our lives are washed away, every spot and wrinkle of them, so that I should behold all this evening, Lord. Father, may you not see anything. Just see us dressed up like the bride of Christ. May that be our portion in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we ask, O oh God, that your spirit that teaches us your word will be with us this evening and teach us that all of us, your children, will be blessed by that which we shall receive from your spirit this evening. And being blessed, may we take that which you have received and share it with others so that your truth will move on in this life in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered our prayers. Bless be thy holy name, Lord, for in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Today, from the link that we have all received, we want to summarize all that we have touched upon in these weeks that we've been talking about the doctrines of men. I shall endeavor to go through what we've studied so far. I may not be able to touch all of them because we cannot start all over again. But we shall take some of the main ones and then um, we'll bring them forth again so that they will come up fresh in our minds. Please remember that the reason why we are doing what we are doing now concerning the doctrines of men is that that's actually the main problem that there is in Christendom today. For if we say we are Christians, if, if we say we are Christians, then it means that we are followers of Jesus Christ. And there's only one way we can follow Jesus Christ and that's by following this world. 
no one can say it's a Christian and then you act the way you like. You be your own master in the matter of belief system. We all say we belong to the church, but that church belongs to Jesus Christ. It is not man's church. It is the church of Christ. So if it is the church of Christ, as we know it is, there is only what Christ says that shall hold. But you see, my dear brethren, as all of us know, what Christ says does not hold really today, unless we want to deceive ourselves. What holds today is what our churches say. A part of the problem is that everybody calls every congregation a church. And we begin to deceive ourselves that because we call something a church, that automatically makes it the church of Christ. It is a lie. There is only one church. It is the church of Jesus Christ. The one that he said in Matthew 16, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That is the only church, and it is only one. And that church is the body of Jesus Christ. And there's only one way that you can get into that body of Jesus Christ. It is through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way we can get into it. Holy Ghost baptism. If we don't have it, then we don't belong to the Church of Jesus Christ. And if we don't belong to the Church, church of Jesus Christ, then it means that when that same Christ comes for his church in the air, what we all call the rapture, then it means you belong to that church, you cannot go in the rapture. And if you don't go in the rapture, that means you are lost. Only few of those who do not go in the rapture, who are not Jews, because the world of the Jews is different, but for all Gentiles, that is people who are not Jews, if you miss the rapture, you have missed salvation. Only a few will be granted pardon among the Gentiles who miss the rapture. And here we are talking about the foolish virgins. They may receive a pardon because they are virgins, that means they are good, but they are careless. So they suffer the loss of missing rapture. They go through the tribulation, go through the great tribulation, appear at the white throne judgment, and finally see salvation there. The rest are lost. And I tell you, my dear children of God, that not many will make the rapture. And it's not because I say so. I don't have any authority to say so. But it's because the Bible says so. And what the Bible says is that what we call church today, all this conglomeration of churches, everywhere I say I'm church, this one church, that one church, the other one church, everybody church, church, church. What the Bible is saying 
concerning this church, 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 this assembly, yeah? the Bible says all these churches, the end of them will be what the Bible calls apostasy, which means they will go away from the truth of God. Going away from the truth of God simply means abandoning God's truth, which is his word. And what makes us to abandon God's truth, which is his word? We drop the doctrines of God and pick on the doctrines of man. That is what the problem is all about. The word of God is established. It is cast iron. You can't break it, you can't change it. It is there. You only believe it. It's either you believe it or you drop it. You believe it, you get the merits, you get salvation. You drop it, you get your punishment, you lose salvation. All because we know what the word says and we say, no, we are not going to follow it. That's terrible. That's really terrible. So today, we want to do a summary of what we have studied before concerning the doctrines of men. I want to start today going through what you have learned before. We want to start with the principal doctrine, which is who really is God. And when we talk about God, all of us know that for us here on earth, the question we are really asking is, who is Jesus Christ? Put in another way, as I always like to ask people who call themselves Christians, I ask them, is Jesus Christ God? And you'll be amazed how many people cannot answer that question Open. When you ask somebody, maybe it's in his 50s, so I'm not talking about the little girl now, the little boy. Somebody who has grown up in the church, who has been in what they call church for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And it's regular church. Everybody knows him and they call him a Christian. They ask him, is Jesus Christ God? Then he begins to scratch his head. Um, uh, brother, you know? He said, no, I don't know. I'm asking you, oh, yes or no? Is Jesus Christ God? Ah, you know, some of them will say, mm -hmm. ah, brother, that thing is, is difficult to. After almost 30, 40 years in church, you cannot answer a simple question, is Jesus Christ God? It's not saying it's difficult to. Eh? You say, you see, eh, brother, you see, eh, you know, we have to look at it one way, then we can look at it one way. Eh, eh. When they begin to talk like that, it just shows you they don't know. So these are people who might say they know about God, but they don't know God. You are not going to go to heaven by knowing about God. No, you won't get there. You will go to heaven by knowing God. You must be absolutely 100% certain of the God you are worshiping. And when we look at what they teach them in our churches, you see that actually our churches don't prepare people to know God. They prepare them to know about God. And, uh, and knowing about God is not the same thing as knowing God. The two are different. They sound alike, but they're not the same. 
So what we are trying to do by what we have taught you all these weeks about the doctrines of men is to establish you in the doctrines of the Bible. The word of God is contained in the Bible. It is not contained anywhere else. It is not contained in the doctrines of your church, in the commandments of your church, of your general overseer, of your pope, of your archbishop, of your primates, of your prelates, all these fancy names they give themselves, which they cannot find in the Bible. These are some of the problems. Instead of sticking to what God has written in the Bible concerning the titles of those who have business in the New Testament church, they have left those ones and they have started giving their own names. Why is it so difficult for them to simply obey what God has put down? It is because there's another spirit that's operating in them. The spirit of disobedience and disobedience to the word of God. So today we will start with the issue of God. Because the first problem that arose inside of the church is about the Godhead. Who really is God? And they said and brought them the doctrine that is called Trinity, which means three persons in one God. And they call that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. It is just not true. That is not a doctrine of God. It is the doctrine of the devil. To lead people away from God. God is not a three persons God. No way. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. What does it say? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, in the beginning, uh, God created, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is what Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says. Look it up in your Bible. It does not say anything else. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the very beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God. He did not say gods. God, one entity, one entity created the heaven and the earth in the beginning. So if God, this one single entity, if he created the heaven and the earth in the beginning, it means that this God was existing before the beginning. Otherwise, the Bible would not have said in the beginning, God created. So God could never have become, uh, he could not have been God when the beginning started. No, he was God before the beginning. But it is only one entity, God. Right. Then let us turn to the only other place, only other Bible, the main other place in the Bible where you see an enlargement of word of Genesis 1 1 is John chapter 1, Gospel of John. So let's go to Gospel of John. Gospel of John. We want to read verses 1 to 3. And then verse 14. Gospel of John. We want to read verses 1 to 3. And then verse 14. Mm -hmm. Always bear in mind what we read in 
Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That is what it says. Now look at what the Gospel of John says. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, and then verse 14. It says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Verse 2. The same, that is the word, was in the beginning with God. Exactly what he said in verse 1. Verse 3. All things were made by him, that is by the word. Everything was made by the word. And without him, without the word, was not anything made that was made. In other words, without the word, there was no creation. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So look at it now. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Full stop. In the beginning, God created. So that action that God took, he took it at the beginning. And for God to have taken that action at the beginning, it means that God was existing before the beginning. Beginning is a function of time. God does not live in time. God lives in eternity. That's why it's eternal life. So when you see in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, it means this God who was existing before the beginning, then he came to the point of beginning and then creation took place. Then in John, where we just read, John now tried to explain to us how this creation took place. And he says, in the beginning was the world. That same beginning, that same beginning where God did the creation, John is now trying to explain to us how that creation came about. He says it was by the world. And what is the word? John says that word was with God, and that word was. God. And in verse 2 it says, that word was in the beginning with God. And then to confirm creation, in verse 3 it says, all things were made by this same word. And without this word was not anything made that was made. So if this word were not God, the means creation was done by two different entities. But as you can see, there were not two entities. In the beginning, in Genesis, in the beginning was, the, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God, one entity. In John, in the beginning was the world, the world was with God, and the world was God. And all things were made by this world, and without him, was not anything made that was made. This world was God. Again, one entity. The same entity in Genesis chapter 1 is the same entity in John chapter 1. And then, in that same John chapter 1, when we get to verse 14, it now says, and that world, which of course is the world, at some point in time, in time, it came 
was made flesh and dwelt among us. What was it that was made flesh and dwelt among us and saw his glory? That is the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, when you look at Lord Jesus Christ, all we are looking at is God. Veiled under the flesh of man and walking on two feet on this world. Otherwise, it is the same entity that did the creation as was narrated in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. But today, the churches teach that there are three persons in one God. We saw only one entity in the two scriptures that talk about the beginning of the world. We we'll just look at the two, two, two scriptures, and we see only one entity there. So where did we come up with this three in one thing? Well, that you know, God, the three in one thing was brought in by the disciples of Satan very early in the history of the church. That's actually the first poison that was put into the chalice of the doctrines of God by his Christ to confuse the world and to make them to believe wrongly so that they will live wrongly and therefore they will head for damnation. There is no way it can be three persons in one God. When you look at John chapter 4, verse 24, in John chapter 4, verse 24, the Bible starts off very, very clearly. In John 4, 24, the Bible says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth but god is a spirit so this is our god who is the spirit is he holy or not all of us know it. God is holy. God is a spirit. God is holy. So what type of spirit is God? He is holy spirit. That's all. So this same one entity in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He said that say, in the beginning, the Holy Spirit created the heaven and the earth. That's all. Because God is that Holy Spirit. There's no else. You know? And you know that there's only other, one other spirit in life. It's either you have the spirit of God or you have the spirit of Satan. Satan, we know, is the devil. The devil is not holy, but the devil is also a spirit. So, the devil cannot be holy spirit, he is evil spirit. Therefore, when we say holy spirit, we can only mean one and only one entity. And that is God, the creator of the universe, creator of heaven and earth, who carried out all this creation by his word. And his, and his word is the same thing as himself. Because the word was with him, meaning that word was an integral part of God. That word is exactly the same thing 
as God because that word itself is also spirit word. Then you see, then we want to look at how Jesus came to the world. Remember what we are doing in summary of all the doctrines of men. And we are taking the most important ones. And the Trinity, Trinity is the most important of all. So, in Matthew 1 18, Bible says that Mary was found with child of the Holy Ghost, which is Holy Spirit. Mary was found with child of the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. Okay? That child in Mary's womb belonged to the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. And this was long before, long before Joseph ever slept with his wife, Mary, because he did later on after she had given birth to Jesus. Hmm. Now, in the same book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 20, the angel of the Lord told Joseph in a vision that he should not fear to take unto, unto himself Mary, his wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. See? Again, confirmation. That child in Mary's womb belonged to the Holy Ghost. That child, of course, we know is Jesus. And when that child Jesus grew and they asked him, Who is your father? He said, God. But Angel Gabriel told Mary, That child in your womb is child of the Holy Ghost. It was also revealed to Mary directly by the angel. That that was the child of the Holy Spirit that she was carrying in her womb. And then the child came up as a grown up man and said, Who is your father? I said, God. So when you put all these testimonies together, you find that it's either that Jesus Christ has two fathers, one called the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, and the other one called God. Or Holy Spirit and God are exactly the same person, the same entity. And that's really what, in fact, it is. Now, let's link. Remember what we are dealing with here now. And the scriptures we just quoted, Matthew and all of them, that is New Testament. Let us go to Old Testament. And see something there in the book of Isaiah. Let's turn to Isaiah 43. And hear what he says. In Isaiah 43, I remember the book of Isaiah was written over 700 years before Jesus was born. That's when the book of Isaiah was written. Over 100 years before Jesus, before Jesus was born. 
And Isaiah verse 43, let us read verses, Isaiah chapter 43, let us read verses 10 to 14. Then we start explaining. Isaiah 43, 10 to 14. I read, ye are my witnesses, said the Lord, that's Jehovah speaking now through Isaiah, the prophet. Ye are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. This is God, Jehovah saying that I, I want you, my servants, that is his children, to know that I am he. He the exact words of Jehovah. Say, so I am he. Before me, there was no God formed. Neither shall there be after me. Eleven, I, that Jehovah is speaking through prophet Isaiah, I, even I, am the Lord. I'm, I am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. This is Jehovah saying that beside him, there is no Savior. You and I today, who do we call Savior? Jesus Christ. But here is Jehovah Say, beside him, beside him, Jehovah, he is Jehovah, beside him, beside him, who is Jehovah, that there is no Savior. Verse 12. I have declared that is in his revelatory capacity as God, and I have saved, and I have shown when there was no straight God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses, said the Lord, that I am God. Jehovah says, I am the Lord. There is no man beside me. There is no Savior beside me. I I am God. So, how many persons do you see there? Three? God, Jehovah, talking. He and he alone. Verse 13. Yea, before the day was, now, before there was ever creation, because they only started at creation, he said, yeah, before the day was, I am he. Do you notice something here? Before the day was. This Bible, I'm not correcting the English of Bible. Bible says before the day was, before there was creation. If we go by English language, the next thing that God should have said is, I was he. Oh my goodness. Just a minute ago we had the light and then one minute after it's gone again. Okay, sorry. Just trying to get for the light available. Yeah, before the day was, 
I am he. Grammarians will say the correct thing have been here before the day was I was he. But he said, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will walk, and who shall let it? Verse 14. Thus said the Lord, your Redeemer. Jehovah calling himself our Redeemer. Today, when you and I talk about Redeemer, who really are we referring to in our hearts? We are referring to Jesus Christ. But here is Jehovah saying that he is the Lord and he is the Redeemer. You see, my dear children of God, go to Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, verse 26. Isaiah 49, verse 26. Isaiah 49. Verse 26. See what God said there again. Isaiah 49, verse 26. Jehovah said, And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with Sweet wine, as with sweet wine, and all flesh, all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, that's Jehovah, and all flesh, you and I, shall know that I, the Lord, am thy savior and thy redeemer, the mighty one. Jacob, Israel. Jehovah said to you and to me that he is the Lord and he is the Savior and he is the Redeemer. And today you and I say that is Jesus Christ. So where are the three persons here? Therefore, God said these things what did Jesus Christ himself say? Go to John chapter 8, verse 24. John 8, 24. Remember, Jesus Christ said in Isaiah 43, in verse 43. In verse 10, this is what the Lord said. He said, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. And before me, there was no other God. Neither shall there be after me. I, God, I am he. None before me, no other God, no, no God before me, none after me. I am He, the only God. John 8 24. Here is Jesus Christ. Look at it from verse 23. Right? Talking to the Jews. Jesus said in verse 23, and he said unto them, ye are from beneath, I am from above, 
I, Jesus, am from above. Ye are of this world. I, Jesus Christ, am not of this world. Verse 24 is where we are going to. I said therefore unto you, addressing the Jews, his people, I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. Jesus addressing his own Jews said, you will die in your sins. That is tough. You will die in your sins. Why? For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. The same thing that Jehovah God claimed in Isaiah 43, verses 10 and uh, 10 and 11, 10 and 13. What Jehovah claimed there, in verse 10 and 13, that I am He, and I'm God, and there's none before me, there's none after me. Jesus Christ, we are looking at Him in flesh, Koro Koro, I like this. Jesus Christ now looked at the Jews and said, if you don't believe that I am he, you will die. What's he saying there? He said, I am God, I am Jehovah. So where are your three persons with your trinity? God in heaven spoke through his prophet Isaiah, said, I am God. I am he. No other God exists before me or after me. Jesus came on this earth and said, I am he. You know what he's saying? I am that same God. And that same Jehovah. And that Jehovah we saw in Isaiah 49, 26, where he said, I am the Savior. I am the Redeemer. And what do you and I call Jesus Christ today? We call him our Redeemer. We call him our Savior. Exactly the same thing that God, Jehovah God, called himself. You know what? Jehovah God is the same God, Jesus Christ, only is in flesh. So we are your three persons there. And you look at everything they call church today, mention them, start. Roman Catholic Church. Anglican Church. Presbyterian Church, Lutheran Church, Baptist Church, Methodist Church, Redeemed Christian Church, Deeper Life, Trem, Aladura, and his sister, Cherubim, Deeper Life. Name all of them. All of them are teaching people that there are three persons in one God. And this God says, it is not so. I am not three persons. I am just one God. There are came in the flesh because we need Jesus Christ. But I'm still that same one God. Which is why Jesus Christ looked at the Jews and said, if you do not believe that I am he, that I'm Jehovah, as I spoke through um, um, Isaiah, that is still the same, so you will die in your sins. In other words, that you don't believe it, that that's who I am, is a sin, and you will die in your sin. Then why are people doing something to the contrary today? And they all have the same Bible that you and I have in our hands this night. They have the same Bible in their hands. Why have they refused to follow it? Why? Reason? Because in the Bible colleges that they attended, in the seminary they attended, this is the doctrine of man that was taught them. And because that's what they were taught, so Bible, keep quiet. We are going to follow what they taught us in Bible college and the seminary. That's what we are going to follow. And Jesus Christ said, in vain they worship teaching for doctrine, the commandments of men. That thing that Jesus Christ said is not different from what he said to the Jews. If you don't believe that I'm he, you will die in your sins. It's exactly the same thing. Just said in a different way.
90 something percent of those who mention him of Jesus Christ today believe in three persons in one God. And they think they are going to go to heaven and meet with three persons up there in heaven who will be one God to them. It is not going to happen. You are not going to get there. This may be, this may annoy some people, and I feel sorry that it, it annoys you. I'm not trying to provoke you, but I'm trying to say to you, this is what the word of God is saying. Why can't you get it? Why is it so difficult for people to say, okay, I take it? No, we're not ready to do that. Because if we take that now, that means uh, we are no longer the big guys we are. Nobody can do big guy with God. Let us understand that very clearly. Everybody should just be quiet. In 7 Corinthians chapter 3, 17, Oh, it's in Isaiah, in Isaiah 43, 11, Jehovah declares, I, even I, am the Lord. That's what God said to Isaiah, in Isaiah 43, 11. He said, I, even I, am the Lord. Then go to 2 Corinthians 13, 17. What does the Bible say? In 2 Corinthians 3, 17, it says that the Lord, he is that spirit. Jehovah in Isaiah 42, 11 said, I, even I am the Lord. And in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, the Bible says, the Lord, he is that Spirit. You see now, God says, I'm the Lord. And the Bible says, The Lord is that Spirit. In John 14, 16 to 18, the Holy Spirit, who we ordinarily we call the Comforter. He was described by Jesus Christ as the spirit of truth. In John 14, 16 to 18, Jesus Christ called the Holy Spirit, all of us normally call the Holy Spirit the comforter. Jesus Christ called him the spirit of truth. Indicating us verse 18 that that spirit of truth is the comforter, which means the Holy Spirit. So, what I'm looking at here, God says, I'm the Lord. So, now we see that that Lord, who is the Spirit, is also the comforter. So, God says, I'm the Lord. The Bible says that, that Lord, the the Lord, he is that spirit. And now we see that that spirit he is the comforter. So what does that make God? So it just means that God is also the Lord, is also the spirit, is also the comforter. The same one entity. <laughs> Where are your three persons there? In John chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus Christ cried, I and my father are one. What else does anybody want him to say? That brought that uh, apostle, Philip, 
in John chapter 14, verses 8 to 10, he said to Jesus, Oh, God, you don't talk too much about your father, your father, your father. Please show us your father and it will be more for us. What did Jesus Christ answer him? Jesus Christ said to Philip, Have I been so long a time with you, Philip, and you have not known me? What did Philip ask for? He said, Master, show us the father. And Jesus Christ replied to him, Philip, have I been so long a time with you and you have not known me? He who has seen me has seen the Father. Oh, buddy. He who has seen me has seen the Father. What else are you asking for? Looking for Father again. Hmm. Hey. You know, when we look at the life of Christ, we never see how he shows us who he is. We all know the story about Christ going to the Mount Transfiguration. He carried those three apostles with him, Peter, James, and John. And as he went up there, all of a sudden, those ones, they couldn't see anybody again. What they saw was what? Light. Light that was brighter than the sun. But who did they go up with? They went up with a man. All of a sudden, they didn't see the man again. What is all about? Light. And what does the Bible say about God? Bible calls God the light. In another place, the Bible calls God the father of light. Yet in another place, it says he lives, that God lives in the light that no man can approach unto. In the book of Psalms, the Bible says that God covers himself with light as if with a cloth. So just can just Show them a little bit of who he really is. And that was immediately after they asked them that question. Who do men say that I am? It was made after that that he took those two apostles for that trip. But I want to remind you of something as we close. I'm sorry, just give me five minutes. All of us know how Jesus Christ went preaching. And he preached for long. People were there waiting to listen to him. They are not like church people today. When the preacher has preached for one hour, they say, mm -hmm. one and a half hour, they say, uh, 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 uh. two hours, say, mm -hmm. when the man says, amen, I say, amen, mm -hmm. they are telling him, shut up, you want to go. Jesus Christ, the apostle, do preaching almost all day, and the people will sit down there and listen to them. Those who want to go to, want them to go to heaven. The same heaven that we today want to go to, but we don't want to hear the word of God. We want to hear it for only a little while. I want to go to that heaven. Hey, may God help us anyway in Jesus' name. Jesus preached so that night, that evening. By the time the, the apostles were telling Oh God, please stop because there's no way we can find food for these people and it is getting dark. Then at the end, Jesus Christ said to them, We are feed the people. Hey, the apostles looked at Jesus and said, Feed the people. So I said, Yes. He said, Master, in case you don't know, why do they have? I think it's uh, five loaves, right? Or is it five fishes? Five loaves and two fishes. And the people were in thousands. And Jesus said to the apostles, feed them. So they had to remind Jesus, please, sir. Maybe you, you think that uh, 
le PQ, there is no PQ, sir. What we have is just five loaves, two fishes. I will have over 5,000 men here without counting the women and the children. And you and I will know today, anywhere they want to talk about the word of God, which people are more in number? The women. The men are too busy thinking about money to be able to come. And the women, they bring their children along. But the men were about 5,000, and nobody counted the women and the children. So if you put the women and children, I'm sure you have over 10,000. And all you had there were two fishes and five loaves. And you are said to those women, well, feed them. I can imagine the apostles looking at each other and saying, oh boy, people are saying, people are saying, Master, no, hear what you say. Let's go and tell him again. Please, sir. Two. One, two fishes. One, two, three, four, five bread. The people, about 10 to 12,000. How can we feed them? You have said, feed them, no problem. Give me the fish, give me the But this is okay. I bless it. Give them. Oh, the person, let's say this our guy, he be like, say, chai. He says, he's not hearing about that. Anyway, he said, yeah, give them. They started distributing two fishes and five loaves. To over 10,000 human beings. And there was still a lot left. What do you think was happening, my dear children of God? Jesus Christ was telling you, I am God, the creator. I just created fishes here now. Fishes that were already cooked, ready to eat. Why is it that we cannot see these things? I we keep talking about three persons in one God. Which person? Which are the persons? This God who created heaven and the earth in Genesis chapter 1, verse 4. And John 1, 1 to 3, and 14 to God flesh. He showed us his creative power while on this earth. And we could not see it. We were blind. Tell me how two fishes can feed over 10,000 persons, unless there was extra fish on the ground. True or false? True. And how could extra fish be on the ground unless it was made available? How was it made available? Fish was created there. Not only created, it was also created ready to chop. Haba. Haba. Why is it that we don't see these things, George? And we continue to want to go to hell, believing Bible college, believing seminary, and rejecting the word of God. And you want to get angry, they criticize my church. Who are you to tell? Do you know how long my church has been? Do you know how many we are there? We're over a billion. We're over a hundred million. We're over five million. Even in my own branch alone, we're over 50,000. Shut up! Salvation is not a numbers game. Salvation is about belief. And belief, believing the word of God. Not your so-called church's word, because there's only one church, and that church is called of the first Christ. There are no two churches. Stop believing nonsense. And if your church is not getting it right, be bold to walk up to your pastor. Be bold to walk up to your admission. Go talk up to your pope. Be bold to walk up to your pastor founder. Go walk up to your general overseer, whether it's national, international, or worldwide. Tell them this is not right. Please look at it, or God, look at it in the Bible. Tell us the right one so we can move ahead. Okay, I took extra time. Let us close now.
But before we close, I want us to look at just one, just one place in uh, in uh, in uh, Luke. Please let's look at Luke twenty-two. I will close that. I I I I I saw you. Luke twenty-two. When this thing hit me, what I want to show you now, I took time thinking about this. I, I was trying to say to myself, are you crazy? But I read, I went over it over and over again. A voice said, have you ever, is it being said like that? Why do you want to come and say this kind of thing? But I'm going to say to you, you also go and think about it, and you can come back on Friday and tell me whether I've gone mad or not. But if not, tell me what you see in it. Let's look at Luke 22. I'm trying to find that time when, when Judas came to identify Jesus. Okay, okay, let's look at it. Luke 22, verse 50. This is at a time in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know? God of Gethsemane. And then Judas led all those enemies of Christ to Christ. And then he betrayed Christ with the kiss. And uh, let's look at verse 49. No, let's start from verse 47. Verse 47, and while he yet spake, behold a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. Verse 48. Remember, I'm reading Luke 28. Verse 48. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? 49. One day which you are about him saw what will follow. They said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them, that's of course Peter, one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Verse 51 is where I'm going to. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. Allow this. And he touched his ear and healed him. So when 
Judas came and betrayed Jesus Christ with a kiss. The apostles reacted and um, uh, Peter drew his sword and he hit Marcus, that the servant of the high priest, and cut off his head, his ear. And all of us know, and that's what we've always said. Then Jesus picked up the ear and put it back. I'm sure that's what we've always said. I decided to check this thing. When this hit, hit me, I checked Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, and John. They reported how Peter cut off the ear of Marcus. Fine. It's only in Luke that talked about how the thing was healed. But do you notice there is nowhere in the gospel, it is my idea and your own idea. There is nowhere in the gospel that says that ear that was cut off was picked up and pulled back. Do you know it's not so? The Bible says Jesus touched the ear. He grew another ear there straight away. Show me your evidence that he picked the ear from the ground and put it back. Only Luke reported this. And what he reported was he touched his ear and healed him. He touched. The ear was cut off. Jesus touched that place and another ear straight away sprang up and put there. What do you see there? Power of creation. That was Jesus' last miracle on earth. And he showed his divine power, his divinity, his creative power. And we still want to die today and to say it is three persons in one God. Church, think of it this evening. Think of it. I have checked over and over before I came to tell you this. I've checked it thoroughly. And I just said to myself, no, no, no. Jesus just made another ear from nothing and just put it back there. There's no scripture that says he picked up that one. They made <laughs> to cleanse it from, with, from sand before putting it. They just thought the place, air came up. He was telling those who can't you see who I am? A man who produced air from nowhere and the air will stick back and be normal like mama. Can't you see I'm God? Church, where is three persons in one God? If you will not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Let us always remember that. And may God bless us as we know this thing, that Trinity is a doctrine from the pits of hell. May God not cut off believing that nonsense in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, creator of the universe, we thank you, O oh God Almighty, for what you have done with us this evening. We thank you for blessing us with your word. Father, may we always remember that which you have taught us. May we use that which you have taught us and share with others, O oh God, that the truth of your word will spread all over this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We know, we are convinced, Lord, that the time to go through the rapture is here. Help your children, Lord, that we will stop believing all these very philosophies of man, but to remain rooted only in the doctrines of God. That in the end, it will not be said that we are worshiping in vain. May that not be our portion, O God, in Jesus' name. And therefore, Lord, let your spirit minister to us, even tonight, in all that we've spoken here this night. Let your spirit teach us even deeper in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, continue to watch over us throughout this night. All other things that you will be doing this night, Father, may 
Spain take absolute control. Even in the matter of VG, all those who denied VG, Father, may be with them. May you direct them by your spirit. May you teach them what to say. May you grant their prayers, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, O oh God, to make friends with your word. Because only by believing your word will be certain of salvation from the by your spirit. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We surrender ourselves unto you. Do not allow the powers of hell to come operating against us to this night while you are asleep. Every move of the enemy through dreams, visions, and all, Father, may you just smite all of them. But let us remember the dreams and visions you give to us. Give us interpretations of them and divine enablement to use them in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. Bless and be that we For in Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Arise, O Lord God, and come down and show us thy mercy. For the time to favor Zion, and we plead, Lord, in all we committed to your hand, that this be the time to favor us in all of them. For ye, the set time is come, and you have set it so long. Let it be our portion in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. Receive the priestly blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. That is Amen. So precious unto you. God lift his countenance upon you. God bless his children. Peace. Amen. The grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. the love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Topman, Brother Sister Chidima, Brother Raymond, Brother Valentine, Sister Favor, Sister Ingi, Sister Ada. All of you are joined us this evening. May God bless you.